there's a team of engineers that are that developed a very clever system and this has been developed with different groups around the world over the past sort of 20 years but we actually um we don't drill a hole in the ice we melt a hole in the ice so it's like having um a, a garden hose pumping jetting warm water and you squirt that down into the ice and you can you can essentially bore a hole through the ice many hundreds of meters and in this case it was about um uh 400 or so meters through the ice to actually get to this um liquid water and so underneath the giant ice cap of antarctica so between the ice and the the ground in some places the the ice is melting and it's actually draining like it does you know in in um locally um uh, in sort of uh non ice covered parts of the world there'll be rivers but they're under the ice um and as you can imagine they've not really been observed very much we this um it's it's not like we have lots of uh, measurements or data or pictures from these sorts of environments we know they're there because we can see this sort of their shape from the surface um and from sort of radar that can penetrate the ice but we don't really know the details about how they work um so so on this most recent expedition we set up it you know took us about three weeks uh and then we we're finally able to get our instruments through the ice and into the water and so um it's pretty exciting uh you're actually you, you're going somewhere that no one's ever been before you're making sort of you're taking pictures and making measurements of something that that's really um un, undiscovered un, unexplored so first off i thought the camera was broken there was um it was it was really quite dark um there was, so there's not a lot to see in the, in the camera even though we've got lights but there was lots of flickering and shimmering and um there's a couple of reasons why that can happen you know there can be sediment in the water or there can be ice crystals um, or your camera can be broken there's lots of things but when we got some more light and when we got closer to the seabed we realized lots of the sort of flickering things were actually um uh, uh animals um they were uh, swarming and so they were sort of one to two centimeter um scale uh, amphipods so like a little um like a krill like a little crustacean Kind of like a shrimp if you like um uh and super active you know just sort of swarming around the camera and the lights um uh hovering disappearing leaping back and forwards and you know we've we've done um we're probably one of the groups in the world that have done the most of these sorts of experiments and you know in past experiments if in the space of two weeks we'd seen like two critters we would have been excited and here we had like a thousand um in the space of a couple of minutes and so um a it was very exciting because you know you have to imagine we'd spent weeks and weeks and weeks waiting for this point and it was completely something completely unexpected came up and so as a scientist that's always exciting that's you know you, you go somewhere to learn something we have barely scratched the surface um so i think it's highly likely that there's lots of these sorts of ecosystems um in different parts of the sort of antarctic coastline so um you know there, there's there's barely a handful of these sorts of experiments around antarctica where we've melted through thick bits of ice to get to the sort of environment beneath and each time there's some sort of biological surprise i mean sometimes there's nothing and that's a surprise in itself um so so yeah i think it's entirely possible that we'll see more of this kind of thing i've been working in antarctica for a, for a few years on what the sea ice around antarctica was doing so that's that's not over a cavity that's over the open ocean and looking at the the warming ocean and how it melted that ice we got the opportunity maybe i guess um six or seven years ago to start taking all our gear our technology to these to these sort of um coastlines that are that are buried under hundreds of meters of ice and so you know i wasn't going to say no to that opportunity and so it's it's kind of interesting in that i'm not i didn't train as an oceanographer 
and the sort of ocean science that we're doing is not really normal oceanography. And so I think the, the thing to take from that is that there's, there's not one way to get somewhere. Um, and sometimes the best person for a thing um, is not necessarily who you might think it would be. So, so yeah, it, it helps to keep an open mind about what's possible, both from, from your own perspective, but also if you're planning some big thing, um, like an expedition or a project or something, you know, sometimes it's it's good to to sort of think about people that might have uh, um, other values and other ideas that you can bring in. 